The United States presidential election is less than a week away, and the stakes couldn't be higher. While we watch war rage across the world, storms intensified because of climate change wreak havoc, people struggling with stagnant wages and increased costs around the world, we have two candidates in the U.S. seemingly locked in a tied battle. One candidate is the current Vice President of the United States. The other candidate is the former President of the United States. And listening to these two people and judging them by their actions, it is baffling to try and figure out why this race is so close. I will examine the reasons for this in this video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. In today's video, I wanted to give a little primer on the US presidential election. We are five days out from the presidential election. I feel like this election has been going on for 20 years. I am ready for it to be over. In the last part of this video, I'll talk about my feelings and what I think is gonna happen in the election. But first, I wanna give you a little primer on how the American presidential election works and sort of compare it to how the German system works. what may be difficult to understand when it comes to the presidential election is that Americans don't directly elect the president. Let me explain what I mean. And this drives me crazy because one of the like major talking points among the MAGA right-wing conservatives, blogosphere, TikTok sphere that you've heard in the last six months is, well, the United States isn't a democracy, it's a constitutional republic which is kind of like saying, this is not a, this is not a, this is not a truck, it's a Ford F-150. Same kind of concept. It is, it is a form of democracy that allows for non-direct representation in election. So how it works is, instead of the president winning by getting a majority of the votes within the country, the president has to get a certain amount of electoral votes. There are 50 states in the U.S. Each state is allocated with the number of electoral votes that equals the total number of representatives they have in government. So each U.S. state has two senators, okay? So each state automatically has two electoral votes. Then each state is proportioned a number of representatives to the House of Representatives based on their population. Just for an example, say Wyoming had two senators and one House Representative representative, Texas would have something like 30 electoral votes. I don't know the exact numbers. I'll put a map on the screen, the exact numbers of total representatives for the electoral college. Now, what we learned in high school, what we learned in civics class, is that the founding fathers formed this system of indirect representation in elections because they wanted to balance the power between popular sovereignty and state power. And essentially, they felt that the big, more populous states would have too much power. And so in order to balance that, with the smaller states that they created this system which allowed for proportional representation and would create a buffer between the population and the president. The reality of it is it was created solely because the slave states were terrified that in a popular vote, they would lose the right to enemy slaves. That's the bottom line. That is the only reason it exists. And the United States is sort of like trying to turn around the Titanic. The Founding Fathers made it intentionally difficult to change the way the system operates. I mean, it's a good and a bad thing, right? It's a double-edged sword. They didn't want the, the ability to change the way things work to be done on a whim. They wanted it to be a serious and done after consultation and uh, agreement. Because the Electoral College unduly benefits the smaller states, particularly in the South, which particularly happen to be red states, happen to be states that support the Republicans. The Republicans will never, ever, ever agree to get rid of the Electoral College unless and until it stops benefiting them. So that's how the Electoral College works. So each state is given a total number of representatives. Whichever person in the popular vote gets the most votes, with the exception of one state, they get all of the electoral votes. So say the Democratic candidate gets 51% of the votes, the Republican candidate gets 49% of the votes, 
The Democrat who won the state gets 100% of the electoral votes. Perhaps a way to make the electoral college more fair would be to use proportional representation. That's, I think that idea has been bandied about a little bit, but there are no serious, real serious efforts to change it because it would be dead on the water because of Republicans. In this particular vote, that means that there really are only seven states in play that the candidates are vying for. You have a number of states who will always vote Republican, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arkansas, those states, Wyoming, North Dakota. These states will always vote Republican. And then you have certain states like California, Oregon, Washington, New York, that will always vote Democrat. So really, the candidates are vying for seven states. These seven states are Arizona, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Carolina, Georgia, and New Mexico. Those are the, really the only states that matter, quote unquote, matter in this election. I will argue a little bit that Texas is looking like it might be a little bit more in play and Florida is looking like it might be a little bit more in play. So if you want to add those to the possible contentious states, you can. I, I think they will probably go to the Republican candidate, but they could possibly be in play. The bottom line is these seven states will determine who becomes the next president of the United States. Now let's compare this to the German system of elections. Bear in mind, I am not a German citizen. I cannot vote in German elections. I have a basic idea of how the structure of the German system works, but please feel free to leave me a comment if I get something wrong about how the system works, because I am definitely not an expert in German politics. But Germany, like a lot of other European countries, has a parliamentary system rather than a direct presidential vote. They have a chancellor who is the prime minister, and he is the leader of the majority party. The Bundestag, or the parliament, elects from their members who will be the chancellor. During an election, Germans vote for two ballots. On one ballot, Germans vote for a local candidate who will represent them as their local representation in the Bundestag. On the second ballot, they vote for a party. This second vote largely determines party representation, aiming for a more accurate reflection of the popular vote. Due to this proportional representation, multiple parties are often needed to form a coalition. Today, Germany is run by the ruling coalition that they call the Stoplight Coalition. It is the SPD, the FDP, and the Greens. Focuses on diverse representation rather than the winner-takes-all system that the U.S. has. The U.S. system encourages a clear majority winner. Lately, this really hasn't been the case. We've had a lot of divided government lately, but the German system more often promotes compromise. So what do I think is gonna happen in this election? If you've followed me for any time, you probably know my politics. I am fairly confident with, I'd say, 98% confidence that Kamala Harris is going to win the presidency. I personally don't think it's going to be that close. I know a lot of people are freaking out about polling and poll show it's close and yada yada. But I really, really, really think there's a concerted effort by Republicans to flood the media sphere with polls. They've taken something like 40 polls in the last, I don't know, two weeks or so that show it being close, that show it's skewed toward the Republicans. But these polls are very, in my opinion, unreliable. Um, the way they're doing their weighting is wonky. The way they're, they're doing it is, is, is really weird. It, 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 it's, it doesn't reflect reality, I don't think. And I think they're doing this for a number of reasons. And I think the media is going along with this for a number of reasons. One, I think they're doing this because if you show it's a close race, people remain tuned in. They don't tune out. They don't, you know, watch something else. And I think the Democrats are kind of going along with this because it doesn't hurt them to look like it's going to be a close race when it comes to turnout. They want more people to turn out. And if it looks like it's going to be a close race, more people are likely to turn out. Part of what I think happened when Hillary Clinton lost the election, A, I think she probably would have been a pretty good president, but she was a horrible candidate. But I think what happened with her is people were overconfident that she was gonna win, and so it lowered turnout. In part, that's why I think turnout was lower. 
in part because people just didn't like either of the candidates. But part of it was it kept the, I think it kept enough people from voting that it certainly affected the results of the election. So the Democrats certainly don't hurt from people thinking it's going to be a close race. The second reason I think is a little bit more nefarious. I think Donald Trump, when he loses, and he will lose, if he does not lose, I will come back and I will make a video saying I was wrong. But I think he will lose. And I think when he loses, he's going to point to all of these polls saying, look, I was ahead. See, they stole it from me. It was a rigged election, fake news, yada, yada, all of the stuff that he always said. So I think he's setting it up for another January 6th style insurrection. I think we're a little in a better position than we were in 2020 for that to happen. But we'll see. I think that, but I think that's the playbook. Those are my thoughts on who I think is going to win. I don't want to sit here and say that democracy dies if Donald Trump gets elected, but the continuous erosion of democracy under Donald Trump will happen. He is an authoritarian wannabe. Um, you can argue whether or not he actually believes the things he says. I think he's probably more of an opportunist than he is a true believer. But the people surrounding him definitely are true believers. And the people that he will put in place are true believers. They may not be outright fascists, but they are definitely fascists adjacent. And Donald Trump has said things that uh, the mustache man here said, such as, um, you know, immigrants are painting the blood of the country, whatever that means. Not to mention the ridiculous things about eating pets and things like that. All of that is just trying to other people and trying to, um, you know, he talks about putting immigrants in camps and deporting 25 million people. Asterisk, there aren't 25 million undocumented immigrants in the United States. So who's he deporting? All brown people? So I firmly of the opinion that when somebody tells you who they are, you believe them. People who were opposed to Hitler made the mistake of thinking, well, seeing Mein Kampf and saying, well, this, 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 this is just a blast and this is hyperbole. He wouldn't really do these things. When people tell you who they are, believe them. So yeah, I think I am gonna try to do a live stream of on election night. So if you're seeing this before the election, try to check out the live stream. I'm gonna try to stream all night. We'll see, I haven't done a live stream in forever. So we'll see how that goes. So guys, I hope this video has been informative. I hope this has helped you to kind of understand a little bit better how the American electoral system works. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. If I said something wrong, please leave me a comment. Let me know in the comments what you think. So guys, until next time, I'll see you later.